Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calder Ness. This episode we're going to be talking about some WizKids rules erratas they made so that way some older figures will work more in line with the new rules. We'll also be talking about the War of the Realms set solicit and discuss a little bit of uh, Clicks Cup preparations. This is episode 332. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional. Hero clicks now. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six yeah. people think I am funny? It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Okay, hey, Google, the back some more. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and seal products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is the Dial H for Hero Clicks champion. The billion clicks, Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Goodness. Yeah, yeah. So you know how WizKids did this whole let's bench some powers thing, Calder? Yep, no, I'm with you. I think that I might have might have made someone at WizKids angry because they sure benched my power <laughs> for a full four days last week. I know, ladies and gentlemen, you were like, oh, what happened to Simeon? Where's he at? What's going on? We had a, a mini hurricane in Nebraska, which I thought that was the one thing we were safe from. And they were like, hurricane level winds. And I was like, no, 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 no. We get the twisty straws in the sky, the the tornadoes, the like, eat some cows kind of things. We don't get hurricane level winds, please. But uh, not only did we get that derecho last year, although... Uh, Iowa got hit a lot harder than we did. R.I.P. Iowa. Uh, I think they're still no longer a state. We're down to 49. Uh, but not only that, we got 96 mile an hour winds, Calder. Oh, geez. I lost power for four days. I had to cut a tree out of my yard with my bare hands. I was just chopping, chopping, karate chopping. I couldn't even mm -hmm. watch Mr. Miyagi. Because I had no power to do oh, the YouTubes. Goodness gracious. I had to do it from memory. It was like, Daniel son, I need your help. And he you know, I couldn't even I couldn't even do it. Simeon didn't have, son. The, didn't have the help. memory. Yeah. I would have I would have been able to make that make that connection, but uh, uh, no power. No no power, right. No, you've said you've said no power quite a few times. Did I? I feel, yeah. I feel like I had to make coffee on my grill. Do you understand how how depraved that is? Turning on oh. your grill at 7 a.m. <laughs> to make coffee? I don't know. I don't have a caffeine addiction. I get plenty uh, of sleep. So I guess I wouldn't really understand. Um, yeah, interesting. Hmm. Well, Simeon, it's... I had to cook I think leftover I'll... KFC on the grill as well. I, I, that doesn't sound bad, though. No, it sounds like actually, a better, a better way okay. to make KFC than just in the microwave or even the oven. Um, I think I'll I'll speak for uh, myself and listeners and say it's glad to have you back. Chad was a fun guest and I had a fun time speaking with Chad about his team and everything. But it is good to have you back, Simeon. So obviously that did not make you happy this week. So let's get a little bit of a uh, positive Simeon Bruce here for a second. And what did make you happy these uh, these past few weeks? I guess that you've been gone. <laughs> so what made me happy? Uh, we did eventually get power back, which was it was great. It was a Tuesday, midway through work, I got the news, power was back, OPPD, which is our, our local power provider, uh, yeah. they they came and they cleared the trees off the line, which I was willing to do, but uh, apparently you can't shoot a fishing bow in city limits at power lines, that's actually a law, so what? I was going to shoot mm. the, the log and like reel it in, but they were like, no, 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 that's illegal, and I was like... It's not if they don't catch me, but uh, they were just standing right there. Anyhow, oh. okay. I don't want to talk about losing power for too long, but uh, it was the Dark Ages for a while. Uh, no, it did make me happy. We did finally get power back on Tuesday, Wednesday evening. I took off, and I went to go see some family that I just do not spend nearly enough time with. Um, 
just due to being an adult traveling is hard getting time to do things and see people is hard uh distance and you know all the things great excuses that i have very hard but it was great to see him um had a tons of we just had tons of fun uh we were we went tubing behind a boat that was really fun oh we, that's know, always we, good time yeah 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 the the kids they're they're my uh cousins um quite a bit younger than me but hilarious children um which is that's kind of you know that's not a common thing i don't normally find children fun or amusing so you know kudos to the my nephews or not i want to call them nephews they're cousins they so whenever i say cousins, but they probably call you uncle bruce don't they I, i'm closer to uncle age to them which is the weird part. right but yes uh my cousin like kudos to them for being interesting enough children that like it was actually fun to hang out because uh i will say like my my coworkers' children are they're awful so <laughs> uh and wow. so are all of yours wow. listeners uh, all your children also awful do not bring them near me i do not want to see Gosh. them i oh, will God. not will not see them in uh the worlds, I, I don't know. Some Dr. Seuss say. Oh, you're trying to do it. You're, okay, yeah. I can tell you're trying to do in a Dr. Seuss thing. In a thing, box but, with a fox. Yeah. yeah. I, I couldn't think of a way that yeah. it didn't sound really weird. Um, mm, but, yeah, we, weird. we saw some really cool stuff. We went to the Parthenon. And uh, we went to a bunch of, like, the downtown district, which is like the Las Vegas Strip. But to be fair, <laughs> okay. I went to Las Vegas, like, February 2020 kind of dead i went to the the broadway street um 2021 the opposite yeah of dead, quite lively oh good yes and that's that's what made me happy i'm gonna wrap it up okay. because otherwise good. we'll have to wrap it back to power and how I yeah let's not it. all right we gotta stop right there so uh this week i had an awesome awesome week this last week i uh Basically, it was really just my Saturday. That was the huge highlight. Um, went to town. Uh, it was Go Fest this past weekend. Um, so that was fun playing Pokemon Go with uh, Lucas Van Holland, uh, his wife, and then uh, not a Heracles player, but another guy out there, Kyle. Uh, really just good walking around town, hanging out. There's also a mini Supercon event going on. So I uh, popped in there for a little bit, talked to some of my friends there. And then there was a wrestling show that night in Valley Springs. Uh, for those that have been sort of keeping up with it, I've sort of had inconsistent updates, but I have been doing the wrestling, the professional style wrestling training uh, every about two days every week ish when I can make it. And I was just wearing my normal duds, uh, my kind of my character thing. Uh, I was thinking because it's easy because it's already what I am and I can just kind of play it up and talk a little weird. You know, cowboy. So that's my character's rawhide sterling. And I shot a promo for it uh, a little while ago. And they did actually upload that to the promotions YouTube channel, which is pretty neat of them to do. Uh, and then I just showed up to whatever. Uh, not, br you know, I didn't really bring a lot of my wrestling gear or a change of clothes. I was just wearing my boots, my pants, my, you know, my button down, all that stuff. And I, I, I thought I showed up just late enough to where they wouldn't give me a match on the card because I had not wrestled in person yet. Um, and sure enough, no, to, that was not what I thought was going to happen. Instead, I made my in-ring debut as Rawhide Sterling. Uh, I faced off against the mafioso uh, Joey Gambino. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, there was nothing on the line. There was obviously no, if I'm going to be a, oh, you know, if it's pride. my debut, there's normally if it's nothing Joey on the Gambino, line. If I know Joey Gambino, it's pride on the line. He it's, didn't move to <laughs> South Dakota to not uh, have pride matches. Uh, actually, Joey Gambino is a uh, San Diego born, uh, proud Nebraskan Simeon. So, wow. That's, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he actually then, makes the drive. Then up I hope he, here. I hope he delivered a pedigree DDT style. <laughs> Jeez. And just KO'd you right on the spot. No, I was I was really proud of this match. I'd wrestled one no, I wrestled two other matches in front of people that was under a mask. Uh, I really gave myself a lot of anxiety when I was doing those matches and I really rushed everything and the guys were throwing way too many moves at me and I was just like I couldn't keep up and those rough matches. 
Uh, but this one, if we really had the pacing down well, um, you know, threw in a couple of yeehaws. I, I was able to say, howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. Felt pretty good. Um, sadly, uh, the speaker at the end of it kind of over, uh, I don't know what I said, overshadowed my happy trails when I eventually left the ring. Um, so, yeah, but it was a good match. I won't, I won't say who won or who lost. Uh, hopefully, that'll be uploaded to YouTube here in the next couple of weeks. Um, I did, I did realize something, and that is to not probably wrestle in cowboy boots again, even though that is oh, the gimmick. Man. Um, because slippery. I've got some blisters. Uh, uh, no, they're not slippery. My, my, my boots have tread on them. They're work boots. They're not riding boots. Okay. So, but like everybody was like, yeah, you should never wear those in the ring again. I'm like, but why? <laughs> why? Why not? I didn't fall. I didn't trip. It all went fine. I didn't go off any of the ropes. I imagine that would probably be a big As no no. Just dump uh, out to have a heel full of blood. <laughs> yeah, I did it. Yeah, the blisters weren't great. Um, yeah, it was cool. It was fun. Sadly, here's one thing I will say. Uh, so for those of you around the Nebraska area that watched Magnum Pro Shows, and I know I've been talking quite a bit about this, but I, it meant a lot to me to finally have my debut match. Uh, we did a battle royale at the end of the show, which is just sort of like, hey, all wrestlers to the ring, battle royale, whatever. It's just kind of a fun thing to do. Uh, wrestler Donnie Pepper Cricket, that's D-O-N-N-Y-P-E-P-P-E-R-C-R-I-C-K-E-T, Pepper Cricket, uh, Kind of his gimmick sort of looks like uh, a Ninja Turtle type font thing. Um, I was wearing my nice blue button shirt, right? I like this shirt a lot. Rolled up the sleeves, looked good. It's also a shirt that I used for my Ash Williams cosplay. Well, halfway through the Battle Royale, he grabs my chest or the shirt and he just rips it. And I see the buttons fly everywhere. <laughs> oh, no. And he like, then he like, he rips it and he pulls it down to try to get it off of me. Well, my sleeves are rolled up, you know, quarter of the way. And I, I'm like trapped on the ground after like eating a boot to the stomach and then getting my shirt ripped off and I'm like I can't move my arms and like my shirt is just I, I'm, I'm so I'm sitting in the middle of the ring trying to pull my shirt off my arms because it's sweaty we're wrestling outside and just wrestling makes you crazy sweaty and I'm just like ah I am so fragile <laughs> right now and you ruined my shirt you bastard so yeah I now, I now have to buy a new shirt uh, I confronted him later about it, and I was like, hey, so how about a new shirt? You know, and he's like, first of all, that wasn't me because he was wearing a mask for the Battle Royale. He's like, that was the chicken. <laughs> I'm like, okay. okay. Then he's like, second of all, are you getting paid? I'm like, well, no. He's like, well, neither am I. I'm like, well, that doesn't mean you can wreck my property, Donnie Pepper Cricket. But oh, uh, anyway. Man. Yeah. The so. Pepper Cricket feud begins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Quickly forget about the uh, the Joey Gambino rawhide feud. It is now the uh, <laughs> the pepper cricket rawhide feud, but no. So yeah, I'll I'll make sure to upload some videos of that. Send if any listeners interested in that, they can message us or whatever, and we'll definitely put it on our Discord. But yeah, that's enough talk about wrestling. I know how controversial that subject can be for some people, so we shall skip it. We shall skip it. All right, Simeon. Hey, let's talk about the news. Or Simeon, what if I told you that even though we've only got Marvel sets lined up for these next few months, what if I said we're going to get another Marvel set? How, how excited would you be about that? Yet another Marvel set. You know, <sighs> if I didn't already know what the set was, I'd be like, eh. But I, I actually am. I'm kind of looking forward to seeing, at least seeing more of what's in the set before I make a decision. Because... Um, it's been a hot minute since we were overloaded with Asgardian goodness, and I do like me some Asgardians. Sure. Uh, the set, of course, we're referring to is none other than Avengers War of the Realms coming soon. It's going to have fast forces. It's going to have a play at home kit, dice and token pack, and a normal brick. So there is no starter for this set. So War of the Realms, what is that? And it's just some sort of wacky story. I guess it's got some Asgard stuff going in. We got some people with some weapons. Let me go ahead and find the solicit here. Thor and the Avengers take on Melkith and other Asgardian threats. Based on the realms shattering the War the Realms event, this hero click set combines some of the coolest Thor stuff with the hottest gameplay of the year. So, you know, you're right. It has been about uh, four years since we had a Thor set, so I'm cool with that. This five-figure booster features fan-favorite characters that are already in modern, like Thor, Captain America, Mary Jane, Gamora, Wasp, uh, not in modern, but Angela, Yandu, Nova, and of course, still in modern, Black Widow. So cool. 
Very neat. Avengers The War of the Realms has more characters with a rally that was first introduced in X-Men Rise and Fall, as well as a brand new mechanic like Recruiter. Mission points will make a triumphant Simeon a triumphant return. Triumphant. And players will unlock all new ways to win. Uh, Shifting Focus is back too, so players will get to play many versions of their favorite characters. I really hope this means we get a Shifting Focus Thor, and hopefully some more Shifting Focus uh, Captain Americas to add to the ones we already have. Uh, also, we to find out new legacy cards. We had 16 commons, 14 uncommons, 14 rares with two primes, 12 super rares and two primes, and then eight chase figures. We get to see pictures of Thor holding out his hammer, like throwing it, but the cape is using it to like not be on his hand. So it's like this mid throw or mid comeback, if you would. The fast forces. We're going to get people representing Midcard, like Thor, Black Widow, Black Panther, along with Loki, Enchantress, and the Executioner representing Asgard. I'm very cool with that. I like to see a new Executioner. I think that'll be fun. Uh, also, really quick, it says Melkith wages war across the Ten Realms. Did, did I miss something when we added a another, oh, yeah, another yeah. realm? We added a realm. Do you know anything about that? No, I, <laughs> that? I honestly no. do not. There's, there's ten. Um, uh, Let's Simeon. name them. We've got Midgard, Asgard, Midgard. Yep. Iceguard, Nilfgaard, which is where the elves no, are from. No, it's, it's like, okay, we got like I, Jotunheim is one yeah. of them. Uh, Simeon, what <laughs> figures are we seeing so far? What what are some figure previews and reveals that we get to see some sculpts for? Yeah, so some of the 3D sculpts that we've got. We've got, so this is very reminiscent of the 2017 uh, Thor set. What was it? Uh, not Hammer of Thor. The Mighty Thor. That's what it was called. Uh, so we've got a Spidey, which looks to be classic Peter Parker, but he's got a weird little horned helmet, a shield, and a sword, which is not typical for Spidey, so it'll be interesting. It'll be like Leap Climb Blades, Super Senses. Never see that combo. It'll be very cool. Uh, we get a Jane Foster um, new sculpt pretty interesting it's not it's not a bad sculpt depending on how the actual quality ends up it looks really cool the digital rendering looks like it has a lot of detail we get a matt murdoch daredevil holding a big old sword which is you know not his usual weapon of choice um and we get no, a not normally uh just making a pose they didn't give him a weapon because his his hands are the weapons i guess Right. Um, what I'm assuming is almost absolutely a super rare is a Thanos with what looks like the world's worst hammer covered in infinity gems, though. So it's, you know, the infinity hammer or something. Uh, I have heard that this is a very cool one page <laughs> reveal or something <laughs> along those lines. I don't think it's like an actual uh, big time character, but he like appears in like some sort of situation. And then the only thing that I can say about this last figure that we see is it's got to be like Odin in some sort of Iron Man armor because he's got a very, uh, like the Iron Doom kind of look of flight where he's got like jet boots coming out except it's pink and then he's got some Iron Man armor kind of looking stuff except they've, instead of like the single chest light, He's got, like, the Thor plates on, like, the two uh, top oh, yeah. shoulder areas that are, like, glowing pink, and he's doing, like, a repulsor blast. I'm assuming it's Odin because the helmet is a giant gold helmet with horns and only a single eye slot. It could be someone else that only has one eye, but Odin is definitely the most famous that I'm aware of, um, at least when it comes to Asgardians. Right. Well... I did not read War of the Realms. Did you read it, Simeon? Not yet. I'll probably pick it up. Um, I'll probably have it finished before uh, Empire even gets previewed. So, oh, nice. <laughs> because who knows when that'll happen. Uh, That's true. But, uh, yeah, it looks interesting. It kind of looks like another Fear Itself kind of style thing where they're outfitting Avengers with Asgardian warfare stuff. Um, similar to like how Cap had like a special shield, Spider Man's got a shield and sword, uh, oh, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um, 
Matt Murdock with like a big old sword is kind of cool, even though it doesn't quite make sense for the character. I'm I'm willing to give it a shot. We'll see. Yeah, I um, recruiter to me is the only interesting, really interesting thing uh, that stands out to me about this set is that we're gonna get recruiter and then more mission points. More mission points, of course. I like I like winning off mission points. I honestly have tried to build teams where I don't have to actually fight my opponent. Um, the first time I built a team sort of like this was with mercenaries from the Deadpool set. So when mercenary died, uh, you would score it. So this is how this is how mercenary read, just so we can see it. When mercenary would be KO'd by an attack, not an opposing attack, just by an attack, the attacker's controller, the attacker's controller, right, rolls a d6 on a 4 through 6. Mercenary is instead added to that player's force on a click 3, and that player scores 35 points. Um, it's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. So basically the whole point of like a team I built with like these mercenaries was to just try to kill them a whole bunch. Um, but sadly that meant I had to play like Titano at a hundred something points, which really oh, sucked. And that yeah. means I can only kill so Titano. many mercenaries. Yeah. So at the time it didn't make sense. It just didn't make sense. But now, and the goal was to basically, uh, cause you get to keep killing them and bringing them back on click three. Right. So if you get lucky, was to have like four or so mercenaries or something like that, just keep killing them, barriering up, and then get to the 400 points to where the, the game is instantly over was like the goal. Um, and you really can't do that. You really just, it just never worked for me. And I wanted to try. So I'm glad that we're getting more mission points. I think we we have some strong, strong bases for mystery, uh, mystery points, mission points right now. I think Empire, if it's done right, we can really push mystery points over, honestly. And then Recruiter I mean, this, to me... At this point, they are mystery points because we yeah, don't know really. what figures they're going to have. So True. Who knows? I mean, fair enough. Yeah, like... So, yeah, it, it's cool. And with uh, with Recruiter, it's... I hope... I hope it's more than just give this character a keyword. If this character, you know, right. like that's yeah, that similar seems to like the, that's the, the rare Steve way to Rogers, do it. But uh, from uh, right. the Captain America set, where it's just a fifty point or less character gets like the Avengers keyword. Um, it would be cool if it had something slightly different than that. If it's like a keyword, I don't. I would be okay with it if it was based on keywords. As long as it's not just a keyword cheat mechanic, because yeah. that kind of, I don't know, it just kind of lessens it if a ton of people in the set do it. Um, like Spider-Man Venom Absolute Carnage, the, all the chases did it, but that was still a very small percentage of the set. Hopefully, if Recruiter is as big and as um, as spread throughout the set as the House of X uh, rally is, then I expect it to be quite a common trait, uh, and it would be bad if such a common trait was used for such brutality as keyword cheating. Uh, yeah, yeah, that would be really rough. I do like the, the double-sided maps that are going to be coming out that are going to remake some Heroclix history maps. So it's going to be some remakes, hopefully like Jotunheim Lake that does the double knockback. Even though knockback doesn't deal damage, it's still really fun to knock people back double. Um, I don't know. The Rainbow Bridge was a cool map. There was a couple like really I did cool like that one. Asgardian maps. Um, and then to go along with that, I'm just so glad that with legacy cards, we will finally see Surtur back in modern. Oh, just gosh, don't say that. Please don't will that to existence, bro. It's disgusting. Can't wait. I'm just... I Especially since okay. he hasn't received an errata, I can't wait to walk uh, my Surtur a full like, speed unless... across the map and then free activate his retaliation and deal a pen damage to everyone within his radius. I just can't if, wait. Uh, dude. I think if they change how he works fundamentally, so it's like... We can get meta characters as ID cards, but they're just going to be hopefully completely different, like Cyclops, right? So instead, I don't have to feel disgusting that I have to play against that gross Cyclops ever again, you know? Which is nice. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Hopefully, just Surtur just isn't made again, because he is a rarer, more more rare colossal oh, yeah. than the Sentinels are. So hopefully... He's quite a bit rarer than 
a lot of the chases from Thor because yeah uh, oh yeah just because of the way the it's set just was more sought off more sought after uh, sought it was after. essentially <laughs> sought after uh, it was essentially one of those colossals per brick so yeah and there was I think eight eight different colossals so it was like a one in eight chance I don't like it I just don't like it. That's rough. All right, guys. Well, that is going to be the... I almost said X-Men Rise and Fall. Goodness gracious. It's going to be the Avengers War of the Realms set. Let us know if you're excited for it in either the comments of a YouTube video or, you know, message the podcast or whatever. Next up, WizKids finally made a bunch of erratas. Uh, sadly, they waited until after July 1st because I think they're lazy, in my opinion. Um... And it really sucks. And here's why. It means we didn't get erratas for characters from like Earth X or oh, you mean any of those. That's... For their new style of <sighs> gameplay called Silver Age. Oh, right. Exactly. So it would be nice to have gotten erratas for those characters. But this is this is what we have instead. So ah, see, yeah, it's just a little rough. Anyways. There, there are a ton of erratas, guys. They go through all the WizKids exclusives that need errated. There's like a couple figures. There's a handful of figures from every set in Modern. Rebirth, Black Panther, the Illuminati, Rege Regenesis, Star Trek, X-Men Animated, Captain America, Justice some League. These, every, basically yeah. every set has some, some of form of errata are, just to go with the new rules. Yeah. Some are, are as simple as instead of capital protected outwit or whatever, they are capital protected... XYZ, they now have safeguard XYZ. Um, right. They're essentially the same things. Those erratas did not change the figure, like how they worked previously. It just made them work under the new rules better or like made it actually make sense under the new rules. Um, and then there's, there's some characters that, you know, one of like the, ongoing questions just because you have to get real pedantic if you want to be competitive in this game you have to you have to be pedantic to the point where you can stall the clock for 40 minutes so uh whiz kids has to try and take that power away from pedantic people so when a power says something like free this character can use incapacitate what that previously meant was or like this character can use incapacitate as free, what that previously meant was that you could use an incapacitate attack and give an opposing character an action token. And so mm. under this new wording, it does the same, essentially. You can you can make a close attack or ranged attack, but you have to give the action token. You have to choose the incapacitate method. Um, so some of the... Some of the fixes are just that simple, where it's just the exact way the character was meant to work previously, and they still work that way. Uh, some characters yeah. actually changed. So, as far as characters that actually change, and uh, really quick before we get into that, I will say, very sad for the Prime Falcon, who used to have Close Combat Expert, but as close. Now his special damage power is just Close Combat Expert, which means he is just worse for his points, flat out nowadays very cool thank you for doing my boy falcon like that that really sucks yeah um but to me probably the biggest change and the one that everybody has been ruling incorrectly for the past couple of months has been jason wingard jason wingard now just gets to uh keep using it as free right and then he gets to keep doing it so right. instead of the whole normal free action thing where it's like oh, you can only use one free action once per turn for the character, uh, instead Jason just gets to keep on trucking, which is awesome. So very, very happy about all of that and the changes to Jason. Yeah. Um, I'm glad to see that everybody ruled it wrong, including characters like Joe Pangrazio and several other people that <laughs> ruled it just completely to wrong. To be fair, uh, they, <laughs> no, they ruled it I will as not be accurately fair. as they I will be could biased. with the given knowledge. No, oh, they can't do my boy Jason like that. I like retroactively him. though. They are they are wrong. Completely wrong. You could yes. Say yes. Thank you. Um, Thank you. That's yes. what I want to hear. Echo chamber. Yeah, there it was. All right, finally. Yeah. So the main wording on Jason is because uh, he has the chain reaction mind control. It says if he continues to hit with mind control, he may use mind control as free an additional time. And that does not mean a, an additional one time. It says if he continues to hit. So if he continues to hit, 
and you hit, he may use mind control as free an additional time. And then if you continue to hit, you may use mind control free an additional time. And so, yeah, it's circumventing the normal once or like one per turn free action uh, with these wordings. So there are a, a very select few characters that got that kind of treatment. Uh, what uh, what changes are you looking at? It seemed kind of neat here, Simeon. So I'm, I'm not going to say this one's neat, but this one is worth noting. Uh, the XDPS Sentinel, the plain old Sentinel, had the knockout gas. This was the incapacitate dial because they had multiple dials. And it reads, incapacitate when Sentinel makes a close attack. It may instead target all opposing characters within three squares in line of fire, regardless of adjacency but must use incapacitate to give action tokens. So mm. this was another, because incapacitate was not like a power action to activate, it was just an inherent power that can happen that you have access to. Uh, they had to word this now in a way where you must use incapacitate to, use, to give action tokens. So you're not... Uh, attacking all opposing characters within three squares and then trying oh, to sure. up damage or something silly like that. Good. Um, some of these uh, that I kind of thought were neat uh, were the ability to push without pushing for certain characters that have activation clicks. So Immortal Hulk now has a trait, which is you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. If he's on click one and is given an action token, after resolutions, you may deal him one unavoidable damage, which is just a very simple way to activate Immortal Hulk here. As well as Robbie Reed has the same trait because Robbie Reed, I guess, has an activation click where you can. Uh, so this is like this is better than pushing, right? Because it only has to do one token yeah. to, uh, to pull it off. It Way better with like a move action because it says also that on yeah. click one and is given an action token. So that could be an action token given from attacking, moving, anything, anything that gives an action token. TK, whatever. So yeah, Robbie Reed having it as well is really sweet. I like that. Uh, someone mentioned that in uh, one of the groups. I'm like, yeah, man, it's uh, it's time for the the Dial H era has began. So pretty excited, <laughs> pretty stoked, stoked about that, which is very nice. Um, what else is cool? Oh yeah, so obscuring terrain they got rid of as well. So characters that worked off obscuring terrain like Null. Uh, this is one thing I will say. Joe Pangrazio uh, actually got correct, and that was. Um, how they were going to rule it and how he ruled it for the clicks cup. So instead, it's just normal smoke cloud and then can teleport within four squares. This is all for Noel, by the way. His, um, what is it called? Something kinesis. It was uh, Umbra kinesis, which is Umbra like kinesis. Dark, yes. Dark kinesis. I don't know what sure. kinesis means. Yeah, man. Uh, controlling powers. So it's just like it's normal smoke cloud is free and then he can be placed within a hindering square within four squares. And then the Absorbing Man from Captain America that also worked off of Obscuring Terrain. Now, I guess when he occupies clear terrain, <laughs> he can uh, use Super Senses and Modify Speed Plus 2. So no matter what map, he will at least always be able to do that, which is pretty cool. Yeah. It, because the way yeah. uh, Absorbing Man works, he can pick like, one of the terrain types, and then it doesn't change until he picks again. So, yeah, he can automatically at the beginning have that which i mean there was a few maps where that would have worked previously but now it's literally every map there's not a single map where he could be on where he the starting area is like completely hindering or something right um, and then uh, we do have some changes that would have been so what calder said earlier this would have been great had they done this post rotation because we've got the prime high evolutionary from the Fantastic Four Future Foundation set mm, who has yeah. the creator of the Animen. If high evolutionary is on an animal theme team, th so this was previously uh, animal theme teams were not named theme teams, and he would create a named theme team for animal, granting you theme team bonus probs. Um since that changed and now generic keywords also grant theme team probs, he instead, his trait, the creator of the Animen, uh, allows your maximum number of theme team probability control uses this game to be six instead of three. We never got this change for quite an important character in my mind, yep. Captain Venom. Uh, so he's just left somewhere in the dust. 
And to be fair, a character that I think will definitely be used in Silver Age going forward. Oh, totally. Um, monster is not going away as a keyword anytime soon. It would be great. And if you were a good and knowledgeable judge, you would see a trait like this and just apply it to all that fit the same wording. Uh, so Venom Captain America would fit in there. But still, how, well, how what, hard would it have been? <laughs> what really hurts is that they mention it during their first article when yes. they first changed the theme team. Right. And, and then it's, it's like, ah, oh, well, it's rotated now, so uh, who, who cares? And it's like, oh, well, uh, I see how it is. I, I honestly feel like they waited until after July 1st to fix everything just so that way they didn't have to worry. But, but then they also made Silver Age, right? So they should try to fix that as well. Who knows? It seems like a really big blunder on WizKids' part, unless they're just like, hey, look, guys, we're going to do everything for Silver Age here in a little bit, because there's obviously more than just what rotated for Silver Age. So if we give them the benefit of the doubt, which, you know, they can be privy to every once in a while, um, hopefully they just say, here's all the modern age changes. Okay, you see them? Cool. Now we're going to start working on all the Silver Age changes, which will obviously be a more massive overhaul because that goes back, you know, to 2016. It's five years of changes. They have, well, not really five, but about four years of changes they have to make. Yeah, more like three. Anyways, whatever. So yeah. those are the erratas. Those are kind of like the big ones. Them are just things like how leap climb works when you're doing a move action, right? Uh, or... Like what Simeon said with incapacitate yeah. and stuff like that. So there's are, not a lot of crazy ones. If you were playing these characters pre-2021 rules change, they should work almost the same as they did. Um, TK is another one where... So TK is like, there's no longer telekinesis attacks. You can't attack, use like picking up an object and throwing it to attack somebody. Uh, so what they're doing is um, granting you with some of these uh, ratas, they're granting you essentially a light object that you are now holding, and you can use the throw, the object throw attack, which is similar to a TK attack, but yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want to check through all of them, they're up on the WizKids forums, the rules forums, and a lot of them, like I said, if you were already playing the character, they will still play the same, uh, if, like, a power granted someone a free close combat expert attack, they could use CCE, but they didn't have access to close combat expert previously, like, anywhere on their dial, it'll still be only applicable for that one free attack or whatever the example is that they get it for free. Uh, there's a lot of little stuff like that, and there's honestly too much that is pretty inherent if you just understand the how they wanted it to work i guess yeah well ladies and gentlemen that is going to be pretty much it for news uh really quick for clicks cup talk this is just more of a quick update for what's going on i'm going to be leaving at an awesome 6 a.m uh out of the airport here so that's waking up roughly you know four ish getting ready getting to the airport by five ish and then uh and then going on so we're going to leave for the Clicks Cup. I'm going to do my best to try to record what I can during the Clicks Club. Maybe a travel blog type thing. Who knows? We'll see. Uh, so yeah, there's going to be that. And then we are also going to... Um, I don't want to say it. Disney see World. what I can do for my teams. Yeah, we're going to go to Disney World. No, <laughs> okay. we're not going to Disney World. <laughs> we're not going to Disney World. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to try to keep up with the Clicks Cup and everything. Uh, hopefully, we can make some pretty funny content. Uh, for those worried about the YouTube or whatever might be happening, uh, I'm going to upload some videos this week, and I'm going to schedule them for upload on quite a few of the days, hopefully. So now that Simeon's got his power back up, I'm going to force him to uh, edit some videos for now. I'm just messing with you. So yeah, it'll be it'll be a good time. So don't worry about the Clicks Cup. And then of course next week we'll have Simeon do an episode with guest or something. And then uh, then after that I'll I'll be back and hopefully get to keep you guys updated with things on like the Facebook and then on Twitter for when uh, whatever tournaments and stuff are happening. Basically that should be how the Clicks Cup is going to go. But I don't know with how tired I might be to be honest with you. So we'll see you guys. We shall see. But that is basically the Clicks Cup update. Uh, for those that might be interested in what I'm going to be running, 
Uh, I'm leaning towards a Liveria Cosmic Future theme team, very similar to what Chad Birdsall had. And then that'd be my modern team, if I can get the pieces borrowed here. We'll see. And then for Silver Age, my plan is to run a uh, Mission Points Ares style team. Um, and yeah, just want to see how that runs. And people are like, ah, oh, dude, don't say that before you go to the events. And I'm like, yeah, it's it's no big deal to me. They they can know what I'm playing. It's it's fine. I don't think it's uh, too big of a deal at all. So, yeah, those those are the plans for the teams. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to record any games. I definitely won't have my uh, what's it called, my tripod and everything with me because I'm gonna be flying, so I won't be able to take it with me. Um, so if I do record any games, it'll be the worst quality ever. And I might not even do that just because I don't want to waste a lot of my phone space on games versus uh, content for a, um, what's it called? Travel vlog style video. So we'll see what we can do, guys. Uh, hopefully it will just be uh, fun content for everybody. So yeah, that'll be it. Uh, we do have some listener questions, though, that we can get into. There are dozens of us. Dozens! Wowee. Uh, so let's just go ahead, jump into some Malcolm questions. He is talking about the Thursday Throwdown games. Uh, he says, which era of Heroclix was the most fun to do or most surprising and why? Malcolm, giving me flashbacks to when I was a small boy in school asking my and why. I do not feel the need to explain my answer. Um, but show your work, I, think, yes. I think the most fun era, even though it was like sadly on whatever, Roll20, I do think the most fun era was carded, but not Oreo base. I think that was the most fun that I had. Yeah. With uh, Thursday Throwdown. I want to say the like indie heavy era because playing like BPRD <laughs> um, stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Like that kind of stuff was crazy fun. Um, there's just so much stuff that I've never physically owned and honestly, I probably never will because it's just, you know, doing doing the Thursday throwdowns with Calder was like a really fun little kind of experiment that we kind of threw together and we did. And I, it made me realize, like, you know, these sets are still extremely fun. Like, if you were new to Heroclix and you and a buddy just bought Hyper Time and Infinity Challenge and that was it, you would still be able to have tons of fun. Even with the new rules, mm -hmm. like, it wouldn't really matter. Um the age system is great because if you if you keep everything in the same age, you don't have to worry about power creep. And yeah, there's we just had a, a lot of fun. But yeah, I'm gonna agree. Um, carded but not Oreo dial was a very yeah. wild, interesting time. <clears throat> and I do realize that probably only about 200 of you guys have watched our Thursday Throwdown games on YouTube. Basically, what we did just to give some context here was we took two sets that were the most close to each other. So when it was Infinity Challenge, or one against Hyper Time, and then so on and so forth, right, for full sets, we made them fight against each other. And by figuring out what we would play, we would have people like you guys, uh, listeners and viewers of the show, to write us in the comment section what figures you wanted to be on our teams. Obviously, some things got more votes than others. That's how it works, and that's what we ended up playing. Then we would play out a game, and then about halfway through for me, about... A little, little less than a quarter of the way in for Simeon, uh, we started doing uh, cosplays for the thumbnails where we would, it's kind of like those closet cosplays where it's just really junky, thro throw together uh, garbage to look sort of closely to the character and whatever color they are. And we just had a lot of fun with that. Um, next up was which sets, uh, best or worst, showcase slash represented the different eras and why? I think the best set that represented Oreo dials with not the card on the back was the War of Light versus Deadpool game. Oh yeah, yeah. I I think I think that was pretty good. Um, that's hard honestly, to disagree with because yeah, that's for two very the, good, very solid uh, sets. There's there's two games that come to mind for uh, cards with no Oreo dials. And that is the Avengers, which is Justice League, which is very fitting, I think, for that era. And then, uh, what was it called? What was the one with Dr. Octopus? So that's Secret Invasion versus something else. And I can't remember what was played. But I think those were also two very Secret good games. Invasion, for those collateral damage? 
Or would that um, no, no. No, I thought our damage didn't have cards. Secret Invasion would have been either Crisis uh, or... Oh, it was against Arkham Asylum. Arkham Asylum. Because okay. Crisis went against Mutations and Monsters. Yeah, I think I think either Invasion and uh, Secret Invasion, or Arkham Asylum versus Secret Invasion or whatever, was probably like some of the best ones. Right also, uh, when, like, that's some of the earlier sets when the REV system was no longer a thing. Um Oh yeah, I think it only I, ended. I would a few say years earlier the the best game that was that represented the um, no card era would have been the indie set versus whatever the indie set went against. As yeah. I thought, especially to Rasputin and the way he played, I think you really got to see just like, oh wow, this character just has surprisingly lots of good. range, yeah, or whatever, good, good power despite, setup, you know, like yeah. Not a lot else going on. Yeah. Um, as far as cards with dials on the back, I think um, I think the Joker's Wild versus whatever it went against was good. Joker's with like Arkham, Wild. I think it was a Joker's Wild versus uh, Spider Man, Spearfoes, Spider Man. That those was good would have been the first two. Yeah, those would have been the first two with dials on the back. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I think that was. I think Superior that was good. Superior foes and Joker's Wild. Uh, Superior foes was less of a Spider-Man set um, than you would think. Like everyone in the set has a tie to Spider-Man, but the the villains like really. Which I mean, it is called Superior Foes, so kudos on naming it after what you actually ended up putting in the set. But the villains make such a great like presence in the set. Chameleon. Devil it was Donald. awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah. Craven, Frogman. I mean, I guess Frogman's not a villain. He might as well. Be. Sort of. He was. Like, they no, he was like for one. a while. Yeah. Uh, dang. <laughs> They're really vilifying my Those homie Frogman. Kids Frog really Man. just <laughs> How buried Frogman deeper than. Oh Craven, yeah. That's with, for sure. Knockback. They absolutely did. Um. All right. So each of us had to face off per set which of those sets that you played against that you wish you could have played instead so like when simeon had whatever set do i wish i had it instead um yeah i think there was uh because he had captain america and i had giant size x-men that was the biggest one where i was like you gotta be kidding me i own every figure from the captain america set and i did not get to play it it was it was crippling it hurt cut deep it cut real deep so that was the biggest one for me that I wish I could have played. Uh, yeah, totally. Wish I could have played Cap instead of Giant Size. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I want to say... Were you playing Wolverine in the X-Men versus Teen Titans? And I had to play Teen Titans? Oh, yes. That was, that was also... That was yikes, pretty dude. pretty bad. <laughs> To be fair, nobody in the history of Hero Clicks, nobody's like my favorite set of all time is Teen Titans. Rebirth is a better Teen Titans set than Teen Titans is. Um, it's true. The, one the Wonder Woman Gravity Feet <laughs> is a better Teen Titans set than Teen Titans. <laughs> yes. The one redeeming thing about Teen Titans is that it's our uh, our most recent Gen 13 teams or characters and figures. But yeah, uh, I literally dressed up as a bag of trash for the Teen Titans set. And that was a game where not only did we play it through, but oh, we gosh. played it through twice because yes, we, did. we lost like the video and like it wasn't until the very end that we realized. And the worst part was like I lost handily and then knowing what Calder was going to do, I still could not <laughs> capitalize or do anything differently. So the video that you see of Teen Titans versus Wolverine and the X-Men is not the same video that we originally filmed, but it's essentially everything happens about the same. Like, I still just yeah. could not. Like, Bunker was my... <sighs> he was he, good, you man. Know, he was the, the, the best figure I had on the team, and he still could not make a difference, even knowing Calder's strategy ahead of time. It was just bad. It was all bad. Yeah. No, Plus, for sure. you didn't even get a single one of the Phoenix Five, and that was... That was so weird, right? Because 
when when there's a fun Definitely chase the theme in a set, stuff. sometimes you would think that like people would vote for that fun chase theme. I think that was one of the most interesting things about Thursday Throwdown was seeing what people voted for, for what they remembered and what they liked about the set. Um, and of course, this is like just the most, um, what's it called, vocal few people that are voting in these. So it is a little strange. But man, it's uh, it, it oh, is yeah. weird seeing like, like man, really you didn't vote for that piece. The most played pieces from Wolverine and the X Men. Um, Calder didn't play hardly any of them, so it would have been Great Lakes Avengers and then like X Factor, because there's two. Sure. There's a Gravity Feed and a Main Set Multiple Man, and those are still some of my favorite Multiple Man figures that they've made. Um, next up here is which games uh, were the most fun? Surprising or just the weirdest? Ah, man, um, that, that's a little tough. It's a little yeah. tough. We did we did not try to pre-answer these at all, so we're trying to just go off the cuff. I think the weirdest game was whichever one was Assassin's Creed versus Gears of War. That just was weird. Oh. It just felt weird. It felt odd and Definitely. strange. Yeah, yeah. That when was the weird. Indie sets clashed. Yeah, because the indie same set with uh, wacky. Street Fighter versus Bioshock was also. Oh, yeah, it was like a set with zero range versus a set that like you know had some range. So it was like no matter what Calder got voted for, uh, because he was playing Street Fighter, it didn't really matter because I could outrange the zero range. Yeah. Um, Street Fighter definitely needed the WWE team ability instead of what they yeah. had, and then they would have actually like been playable. Yeah, WizKids has know. definitely made it a lot better. The indie, oh for sure, the indie team abilities since WWE have been a lot better. Uh, and how many have we had since then? Oh yes, just WWEs. We're very good. yeah, very good. Yeah, um, at least Wave One, not sold on Wave Two yet. Um, that would definitely be the weirdest. I don't know about surprising. Um, that's pretty tough, honestly, because it's been a very far removed from these games. I think the most surprising one was I definitely thought I was going to sweep a victory with Earth X. I thought I definitely thought I had that one like super in the bag. And that was surprising. That is like, oh, no, Batman, the animated series yeah. came through. Same. That, with, was, uh, that was wild. Age of Ultron versus Nick Fury, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. When Nick Fury, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. came out, this was like, I was beginning my hiatus of play, and this was at the very, not the very beginning of my career, but like at this point, I still had never broken into competitive. So my opinion of Nick Fury it was like very shrouded in like casual stuff, where I was just like, everything's under like 50 points. What a garbage set. And so I still had that kind of notion. And then the game was just so very one sided. And I think it's. Like predominantly because Doctor Demonicus makes four extremely powerful bystanders, oh, and yeah. uh, it was just kind of nuts. So, um, let's see. Uh, one that was really surprising. Other than that, man. Who I can't remember who won the uh, Incredible Hulk versus Superman set. Um, I did. That it was, was like that the, was a very one close of the closer one. games. Yeah, yeah, and I thought Superman was because again, like retroactive, like in my brain, I just remember Incredible Hulk set being kind of mediocre dials. Right. Yeah. Especially in like light of like the new style. Yeah, I just um, so, yeah, had I thought I was just gonna like whatever Thunderbolt yeah. Ross, and then he turned into Red Hulk, and that's like all who I had left. But he had Flurry on his last click or whatever. Mm -hmm. and I was like, wow, mm -hmm. wow. Mm -hmm. And then let's see. We know that both of you guys started much later in Hero Clicks and was not around when they first started. Yep. Uh, by playing these Thursday Throwdown games, what did you learn about Hero Clicks? Uh, I think kind of what Simeon said earlier, I think it was like fun at every time, you know, honestly, yeah. like I think it was just like a fun game throughout its entirety of its life. Like the core set is there and obviously we played it with current rules and not old rules when we did those older sets. But still, it's like you can get enjoyment out of uh, each era of Heroclix and I, I heavily, I heavily liked that. Yeah. And the way we built these teams, we never built like the the most competitive stuff that we could. We never built like two win 
it was mostly based on votes and then occasionally we would fill out a few points on our own and yeah. so yeah we ended up with some really like fun wacky teams that had in some like some circumstances they had a lot of synergy and then sometimes there was like zero synergy yeah you kind of tell that nothing in the there uh yeah in some of the videos you can just be like oh yeah like one team has a lot of good figures and the other team is just like it's there <laughs> there's stuff going on um but yeah i yeah like i said earlier i just think uh if you if you were to take like any of these sets that we did and you have figures from those sets and you have a buddy to play with I think you'd have fun with just, you know, Infinity War versus Hyper Time, uh, Justice League versus Indy, uh, Legacy versus Fantastic Forces, you know, like whatever you like choose, no matter how old, if it's all in the same kind of era, I think you're fine. And I think it's cool. Um, next up is how did the game of Hero Clicks change over time? I mean, how, how didn't it? change yeah. right so New powers. When, we, when we start off it's just very simple they added more colors of powers they added special powers which greatly lets you understand characters intricate abilities way more you know maps got different maps got things they eventually did relics and like ah, oh, no relics ain't good resources aren't this isn't quite right um then they did you know id cards and all sorts of crazy stuff you know with equipment now and then shared traits which is probably the best change to hero clicks honestly um so yeah dude like how, how did it not change it went from being a very simple game to being a, a very good one which yeah. is not isn't bad and i know. will say um also like something that has definitely gone away in the newer sets is the very first hero click set the first uh, the very first couple hero click set your character with very few exceptions never got better as it went down dial and almost always the last click was just complete like trash like your yeah, opponent did not bear. need to KO you they could just hit you to your second la to last or last click and it was just as good as dead like uh, let's see. Veteran Annihilus on the 8th and ninth click. 4 speed, 4 attack, 10 defense, 1 damage for 129 points. Like, it's just, it's something you do not see in clicks anymore. Because if that was uh, a modern figure ever hit those kind of stats, you just wouldn't play it. You know, if my down dial mm -hmm. on, like, a, in a new set, my character went below like 16 defense i would just be like nope not going on the team unless it's you know some small support piece thing uh so yeah that's something that like is very different than you know they you could tell that like characters were taking damage annihilus is beat down and he's he's very wounded on these clicks and you can just tell from his stats uh whereas nowadays you have a a more static like the powers might change but the values are fairly static in the same kind of realm, at least uh, down dial than they used to be. Yeah. <clears throat> because of your Thursday turn on games that deal with hero clicks that you don't own, which of those that you didn't own before that you played in Thursday throw down game that you bought already or are going to buy? Hmm. That's an interesting question. I don't think... I don't really think any of these games necessarily sold me on a figure. You know, I think if I played it, I was like, oh, well, it was good at the time and it, it helped me win the game. Sure. But I don't think I ever like went out of my way and bought. I can't remember buying a figure like no. because I played it on here. Honestly, um, there was that might not be the answer you want, Malcolm, but <laughs> yeah. that is kind of true. So like, again, if like this is what you're planning on doing, if you already have these sets, it's a very great way to like have fun. Um, if you don't already have them, you might as well buy newer ones instead. But that being yeah. said, like I did, I was surprised and uh, actually picked up some uh, around like the Armor Wars to I want to say like Supernova. I was surprised with how good like the sculpts were. There's some like crazy interesting sculpts that we just have not have had since then, 
and I was surprised with like how cool some of them were, and they're just extremely cheap, extremely cheap. So uh, with that, if you just want to make like a little display, um, there's tons of like really cheap older sculpts that they really put a lot of effort into. Uh, collateral damage, the uh, Leonard Snart or Captain Cold, uh, whichever. Um, tons of detail into that. And, like, especially compared to, like, the newer ones, the that old collateral damage one, he's got, like, a huge ice wall that he's, like, leaning against. He's got his gun out. Like, it actually looks like an action pose as opposed to the, you know, flash set where he's just, like, standing there. Yeah, that's fair. You know, especially with someone who you could totally showcase their power like captain cold i like shooting his gun or when he has like ice powers or whatever you can showcase that and then to just be like it's me i have the cold gun i stand is a little boring uh all right last question which games do you wish you could do over i don't know i think i think all the games are fun i think they're all good yeah um, i think we did them I... over yeah There's yeah like, yikes at least once honestly, or twice when, I, well, I, yeah, we, you know, had to do, we did twice. two games over. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, we were mentally shot when we... One game, we like we did it over, and we're like, we're not doing it. We're just explaining what happened. We're not playing this freaking game again, is like one of them. And the other one, which is the X-Men vs. Teen Titans, we actually did over. So there's none of these games that I would do over. Were there games where I was like, oh, man, I made a mistake. I definitely could have played that better or whatever. Sure, there was, but I would never want to play them again. It's not that we didn't have fun during it. It's just the games took a long time, and, yeah, we were just, we were just burnt normally by the end of them. So, yeah. yeah. And plus, I mean, when you have so many fi- – when you're reaching the golden age, you have so many figures to choose from, it doesn't make sense to use the exact same team. So, um, yeah, had we, like, opened voting again and been like, oh, yeah, like – pick a new set of figures from each of these sets that might have been different but um to be honest we were usually like scraping the barrel when it came to votes sometimes so uh yeah i i don't think there's any that i would prefer to redo yeah def yeah none of them nope don't need to redo any i'm good uh next up is we're talking about the thumbnails and all the cosplays we did so what was your best, worst, favorite thumbnail for Thursday Throwdown Games? I think the best thumbnail we did was the Age of Ultron versus, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Age of Ultron versus Nick Fury, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I think we were both uh, very on top of the cosplay game right there. I would say, now I kind of need to look at all of them. I think our worst, uh, our worst was Mage Knight Resurrection versus The Hobbit. Those were pretty, that was bad. I, I liked Simeon doing his almost clear Simeon, um, but I was like wearing a pair of black shorts over yeah. my head, and uh, it was just, it was like a not great. We were not, it wasn't one of our more creative ones. It was a little rough. And then favorite? Um, oh gosh, dude. My, my favorite for like how we both looked, uh, Avengers Infinity versus Xavier School. Thought it was funny. That that might be one of my favorites. That was good. Uh, close second being Mighty Thor and Harley Quinn and the Gotham Girls. Very funny with those ones. Oh gosh, this was just it was a golden. School. Oh, that was it was one. a golden time. Elseworlds and say, what if? Actually, so yeah, my, my, my one of my favorite. favorites is Elseworlds and what if? Yeah, that's a good because one. Because the like I sat there for so long being like, how can I, how can I do any of the? And then I was like, oh, I can totally do Venom Thor. And then I came up with like the worst possible looking little outfit. <laughs> this is so uh, funny, dude. Calder's just like a weird combo of uh, like the two gun kid, and I don't e- I don't even know. Kid Flash, man. I'm, I'm Kid yeah. Flash. I'm, I'm Bart <laughs> Allen or whatever. Barry. Who knows? Whatever the Midwest or Wild West Flash is. It was hilarious. It was great. Um. I think our I think our worst one was Superior Foes of Spider Man versus Joker's Wild, uh, or at least horrifying in my opinion. Uh, watching Simeon be the <laughs> uh, what's it called Devil Dinosaur this is so bad. Uh, and then I literally just wore a mask and then a shirt and then I used 
uh, a tool, an editor, to put an A over my <laughs> shoulders so I could be anarchy. It was, uh, it was bad. Was that one more disturbing? I don't know. I think a lot of the ones I've done have been kind of disturbing. There were some disturbing ones. Yeah, you had some disturbing ones. Uh, of War was maybe the worst Star one Trek was the, um, the ship. Was... Yeah, Star Trek ship <laughs> one was nightmare fuel. Uh, that one was really bad. Yikes, dude. What else was I going to Full aluminum hat. Um man so know. terrible uh all right um so which ones took the longest to do which costume took the longest simeon oh i will also say uh my least favorite one that i ever did was bioshock infinite there just was not a character that i played that made sense and i tried to do whatever like the weird blind man child thing that like has ears oh yeah i tried to do that and it just turned out real bad but um which one took the longest uh it's gotta be because i made my own bald cap for it it's Mm. gotta be origins versus supernova when i dressed up as high father i think that's who it was high father yeah the guy in the chair um i i made my own bald cap and then i put like a ton of flour in my hair and my beard to make it appear white the actual outfit did not take very long but like just the the amount of time i took to try and make myself look old took forever um let's see a lot of these were like very quick like secret invasion doing doc ock that was two separate photos but the one, like the photo of like the front of Doc Ock, is just me with a black shirt on and then a paper towel that I drew a tie onto. So it looks like I've got a white shirt, but that's just a paper towel. Um, Lobo from uh, the Superman set. I just had, you know, that was a lot of face painting. But other than that, like I already had gloves and the vest and stuff. The haunted tank from the Batman set took me some time because I had to spray paint a tube green and that was like the most effort that I put into that one uh, but yeah wow. a lot of these a lot of these wow. I really, you'd be surprised wow. which ones took I, effort wow, I didn't know you spray painted wow dude okay yeah. I was like <laughs> you'd be surprised which here. ones of these took more effort because it's you know okay. sometimes it's like Dang. it looks Dang, like trash man. but it actually took yeah. way more effort than uh, you would think so I'm going to take away all the ones where I use my cosplay because that's just sort of cheating because like I didn't build that for the thumbnail. It took me months and months and I definitely would not take months out of my time for a thumbnail costume. Um, that one would be the comedian took me the longest out of all of those cosplays that you ever see here. But the thumbnail that I made purely for thumbnail uh, purposes that took me the longest uh, was the Iron Maiden one. And that was Ooh. trying to uh, figure out everything and get this weird hood that sort of almost looks like the Iron Maiden person's face. Uh, but yeah, the Iron Maiden one definitely took me the longest, and I definitely um, redid a few times to make sure I got the pose correct on that one, for sure. So I, like, it, I think it's we definitely both between... did an okay job in that one, too. Oh, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, the... Uh, your Colonel Stars and Stripes was really funny. <laughs> this was great. You, the worst part is I tried to recapture the like the lean that he's doing on the sculpt, so it makes my yeah. legs look tiny. It looks so small, dude. To my it's because I'm leaning so far. Oh forward. my gosh! Yeah, your legs look yeah. incredibly small. It's so bad. Good it's it's hilarious stuff, but... though. Uh, <laughs> the second one also that took a long time was uh, Ratman. Me getting all my oh, stuff. Yeah. For, uh, for rat man and then I also found a little plushy rat to put on my shoulder that was pretty fun um yeah which one was the easiest to do uh for me the easiest one to make uh were all the ones that I wasn't in it uh so the easiest one was Deadpool and the X-Force versus Avengers Defenders War I stepped out of my front porch I said hey Bessie um and basically got a cow's attention to turn and look at me and then i took a picture of her and then that was it that was probably the easiest one to do was to just go outside and take a picture of one of the cows that was very convenient there they're also in a pasture near us at that time in their rotation not counting uh like critical mass and legacy where i just photoshopped 
different internet pictures over my head. Um, the easiest one, man, Uncle Sam took. That was another one that took way too long because I tried to like age my, I tried to like make my beard white, and then I don't own a blue vest or hat, so that's all just like painter's tape that I tried to like make into the right shape. Um, I'm not going to count the one with my Wolverine hoodie because I've used that so many times. Oh man. The easiest, you know what it was? It was, uh, who's that guy from the Deadpool set war of light versus Deadpool. Um, Oh, Tiamat. No, it's uh like alternate universe Deadpool with the hieroglyphic stuff. Oh, okay, I know what you mean. I can't remember his name right uh, off the top of my head. Uh, Rock, yeah, I don't know either. But it's, Rush. He's got a knife. Uh, yeah, he's. I'll pull him up real quick just so I I don't leave the listener who's screaming T Ray. Um, I was a T something. I was close. Yeah, T Ray. That one was Darn. actually very easy because I essentially just put my hair up in a like certain way, held like a knife, posed, and then that was like it. I had like a kimono on with like the sleeves rolled up. It was quite easy. Um, yeah, most of them were more intricate than that, but one that was surprisingly yeah. difficult was Superman and the Wonder Woman. I had to balance oh, yeah. three candles on my head. And then I don't even think you can really even tell. Hell yeah. I was like, I definitely couldn't tell that, dude. Um, then Malcolm asked, which one would you want to redo? Uh, it's For me, it's easily Wolverine and the X-Men. I, I did this terrible editing job to put a bald person's <laughs> top of their head on my head. Uh, and then I used a tool to expand the girth of my body and arms to look like strong guy. And it looks so bad. Oh my gosh, it's, <laughs> it's so scary, bad. Yeah. It's it's terrifying. It's and also the fun. um the abundant uh farmers uh uh farmers tan is also oh, yeah. bad. Uh so yeah, it, that was a rough <laughs> a one. Massive Neapolitan arm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, yeah. It's rough. One that I would redo. I'd redo all the ones that I I didn't really do anything for. But let's see. One oh Bioshock Infinite easily. That one was just. It was like late, and I was like, I don't know what to do to make this work. And so I just, I just tried and threw it together, and it just did not work. I was even like, I used a mannequin head on top of my head, so my head was like actually like the the collar of the shirt. And then the mannequin head was like supposed to be in the gold area of like the, it just, it, none of it worked the way I was expecting it to. And then I was just like, I cannot put more effort into this. I am so exhausted with trying yeah. to make this work. Um, and then since you dressed up with the sets you played, which sets would you like to do a cosplay instead that you didn't do last time? So basically if we had to switch sets for cosplay reasons, which one would you like to do? Um, Ooh. That is a good question. That is a really good one. Uh, I'm trying to think of, like the characters Simeon played in each set. And which ones like I would have enjoyed cosplaying from, you know? That'd be kind of like the different uh whatever. I um hmm. I honestly really don't know. That's pretty tough. Uh I'll say um Age of Ultron would have been like a fun challenge. Out of like yeah, the, the I definitely I can only remember a few of the figures that would you would not with. have done Doctor Demonicus, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. I fear itself would have been cool. You know, Simeon did Speedball, which was funny, um, but I think he had some other cool characters. Could have been so. Fear itself was cool. Uh, Crisis. I I wouldn't have minded being a. Uh, Uncle Sam. Although I liked Simeon's Uncle Sam very much, so that was very funny. Uh, so yeah, that was a good time. Yeah. Now, yeah, I just just tried. Tried. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dude, um, I now that I'm like looking through these thumbnails, I'm mad at myself for not cosplaying sooner because I'm like, oh man, it would be cool <laughs> if I was in uh, 
whatever several of these costumes oh your Aries is terrifying i forgot that Aries yeah look like that yikes <laughs> just just your like eyes nose and eyes yeah popping out of his so mouth in a way that it was not <laughs> oh, meant to. um to yeah. be fair i didn't do like a true cosplay i mean i technically ultimates versus uh mutant mayhem but that was just like i i threw a hoodie on um it wasn't until armor wars and then your first cosplay was only it's say, pretty late like in the game four, it was almost six, halfway six through later. yeah um yeah, my first so quote was, unquote cosplay, I do DC seventy fifth, and then I do this horrifying uh, juggernaut <laughs> where I duct tape my face. It looks really bad. Giant size X Men would have been a fun one to try because there's a couple yeah. X Men in there, but yeah, some of these were just you know the characters that we got votes for were just like I would just sit there and I'd be like, I can't think of a single way to do any of these. Oh know, yeah, that kind of thing like Doomsday. From uh, Justice, the original Justice League set, I have no idea how it would have done something like that. Um, mm -hmm. And like, I'm pretty sure I did the Two Gun Kid for the Avengers set. Dude, that was hilarious, man. The only that reason so I did that funny. was he was like the the most normal looking character that I played. So I was like, man, I guess I have to do this guy, which he actually works pretty good. I think that's another character yeah. that got better with the new rules. Um, I'll uh, probably because he was already better by like 2017 rule standards. Um, let's see. And then last question: Which future Thursday Throwdown games that are you looking to make into thumbnails, dude? Pretty much. Uh, as far as future games go, let's see. Uh, so in the future, so far we just have like Empire, and then a few other ones: uh, Rise and Fall, and Wonder Woman. So for Wonder Woman, hopefully in for wonder woman i would be pretty excited honestly to do uh what's it called did you guy gardner uh, again just so i can instantly use another guy gardner but i actually do want to make a red lantern guy gardner costume so that'd be cool and then as far as like empire goes and rise and fall like for empire definitely that thanos captain america is funny yeah. So stuff like that, but obviously there's not a lot of future sets that we can do because we only know what's coming out. We don't know, yeah, we don't in know modern. a ton of yeah. stuff. Um, Mimic would be fun to try. Something like Weapon Hex or Diamond Patch would be interesting. Um, the Ultra Taste Deadpool, of course, would be if you could somehow pull it off with like a giant actual cake or oh, goodness. You know, just photoshopping a cake. Those kind of things would be cool. Um, but yeah, then there's there's just like a ton of stuff that's not fun in those sets. So, I don't know, maybe it'd end up being Hellfire Club Guard, and i just make like a weird face mask. Yeah, sure. Um, and that's it for Malcolm. Next up, we're going to get in some listener questions from our Discord. Luke Luke says, despite the fact that it has yet to be released, I'm going to make a bold statement and says, bots to rise and fall... With that, let's talk Empire. So Recruiter and follow-up. Uh, all we can do is speculate. What would these powers ideally be for you? And what do you think WizKids will do with them instead? Uh, you do, Empire's going to have more characters to rally. Or new mechanics like Recruiter and follow-up. So follow-up, I honestly... I'm going to assume that when a friendly character hits, it, they can then free action move uh, another character. That could maybe see the friendly character or... Something yeah. like that, you know? Just sort of like a, a movement. Something like the Giganta Retaliation, where it kicks off from a Wonder Woman hitting. So not ne like not necessarily as good as that, where it's like you can cross the map. But yeah, if it's like um, if a friendly character named X or, you know, with this keyword hits and you can see like the opposing character like free make a range attack. Something like that, where it like gives you that would be that would be the only thing I can understand follow up to be, because what uh, what else could it possibly be other than an additional attack? Right. Like a follow up attack is literally the only thing that would make sense in clicks to me. Um, a follow up perplex uh, recruiter. We kind of talked about this. We did talk about it, the, so I think yeah, I can, I feel pretty comfortable episode. skipping it. Just like yeah, yeah, hopefully it's not just keyword cheating, uh, but we'll see. 
Alex uh, says, feel free to ignore this question if you don't have an answer, but have you ever had a team that you loved playing, but you would rather WizKids never made a particular figure that made it even better because the figure wasn't fun to you? Uh, of course, he means this in a competitive sense. Like, if you don't want to play Tri-Sentinel and Casual, you know, you can just not. So, basically, was there ever a team that you made that you were like, I can't quite play it in Casual because there's one figure that is just too good? And honestly, no, I guess not. I don't think I play a lot of teams like that anyways. I think when I build casually, they end up just being bad teams naturally just because I'm being like, oh, this character, this character, this character, this character. That's it, you know? Yeah. I've never once been like, oh, I, I've normally had a pretty good head on my shoulders to be like, oh, I'm not going to build with like Unimind. Well, not that I ever even built with Unimind ever, but like in casual, especially, you know? So like... I wouldn't worry too... Yeah, I can't really say I really have much of an answer for that one. Yeah, of course, this is in a competitive sense if you don't want to play Tri-Sentinel. Tri um, a team that I loved playing... I mean, to be fair, like the most competitive team that I really enjoyed, that I like actually enjoyed and was fairly competitive, was WWE... And so far, uh, hey, Kenny Pena, uh, dolphin lover and friend, where's that set? Where's wave two? I don't know. So, yeah, that's uh, uh, WWE's like my favorite competitive slash fun for me team. And yet uh, I can't answer this question because I don't know if WizKids will ever make another figure that fits that team. So who knows? Um, and then casually, yeah, like I tend to just gravitate towards figures that I haven't played either recently or at all. And so that usually like within a couple weeks of play, that'll put me towards like the bottom barrel of just kind of like very casual figures, like very like only good in a casual setting. I still try and look for like thematic or uh, kind of like synergistic kind of like teams. You know, I, I still like look for like somebody to carry me, somebody to TK or prob, those kind of things. But I don't like force it on the team. If it's not there, it's not there. Yeah, honestly, I'm kind of the same way. And some of the times I just I forget to be like, oh, I guess it's, it's no problem. This team Ooh, whoopsies didn't even think about, you know, stuff like that. Uh, Chance McCall says if you and Simeon, I suppose by you, he means Calder and Simeon were on the hit TV show Hell's Kitchen. Which one of you would be told to turn in their chef's jacket first? Interesting. I want to say Calder. <laughs> so... Yeah, honestly, here's the thing. I don't do a lot of uh, I don't do a lot of cooking. I'm not um, I'm not like people have like seen me make food and it's like, oh, are you gonna put anything on that? I'm like, what? No, it's it's cooked. I'm like, yeah, but it's just like a pound of ground beef, and I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna gonna eat it. It's like, oh, are you gonna <laughs> like gonna eat it with anything else? I'm like, no, I, I I put salt and pepper on it. It was cooked in butter, and they're like, oh, I, okay. To be fair, what butter a, is a very good seasoning. It's very yeah, good. so I um I get by with seasoning. like whatever you know. I bet if we look into Simeon and I's kitchens, to be fair, I live with my brother. And Simeon does not. Um, so if we if we look into our kitchens, it's like I've got like eggs. I have like sliced ham and turkey. I have a bunch of different beef from the ranch, frozen chicken, and like bananas and milk and whatever. Like I'm just like I've got the bare essentials. I have my two or three breakfasts I like to make, which is like potatoes, egg, sausage, or bagel, egg, sausage, sandwich, breakfast, or omelet, or like whatever. I got my three breakfasts. I have my four or five different lunches I like to make, you know, rice, beef, rice, chicken, beef, bagel, um, burger, you know, like whatever. You know, I've got my two or three different dinners, which is steak or something else. You know, like I don't, I'm not like a cooker. I don't cook a lot of things. I don't really care. I've got, I don't have guests over. I don't go grilling. I don't have anyone to show off to. Um, it's just me. And I like to eat the food that I eat. So it's, yeah, yeah I think I would definitely uh, turn in my chef's jacket first. They wouldn't, they'd be like, oh, you've showed up. Insane. Cool. You can just uh, go out first episode as soon as you feel Calder the Calder does not own a walk and I do own a walk. I do not own so, a walk. Uh, Correct. 
I think that answers the question. If I uh, maybe so. it is, maybe it does. Uh, if a certain venue owner and his son, who have a good HeroClix tournament, had to had a TLC match versus two members of a podcast from the Pacific Northwest, who would you bet on? Also, who would go through a table? So, a table ladders, uh, chairs match. I think is this, is it normally whoever goes through a table loses, or is that just a normal just table match? That would just be a table match. A table TLC match. match. I think I want to say it still like involves a pin, like t- tables, mm. ladders, and chairs Not are allowed. Pin. It's essentially yeah. like a hardcore match. But so in the ladder match, you have to climb a ladder <laughs> to reach the belt or case or like whatever. In a table match, you have to put your opponent through a table and to win. Normally, uh, TLC is like tornado tag or crazy tag rules, right? right? Where just everybody's legal at the same time. There's no actual like tagging happening. It's just team, basically a team fight. Um, the members of the Pacific Northwest show, um, I don't know. Uh, let's see. There, There's one person from the Pacific Northwest who I know has a podcast. That's Jeff Polier. Um <laughs> But I don't think that's what he means. I think he means people from the Eagles cast. I listened to the first uh, episode I ever listened to of the Eagles cast the other day. It was a little confusing, not going to lie. Um, they have a lot of people on their show, so I don't know which two members we'd be using. Nor do I. Nor have I ever seen them in person. So when it's a physical competition, you kind of got to look at like someone's physique and tell whether or not they're athletic. Um, so I don't really know who would win, honestly. They drink a lot of beer, which means they're probably pretty slow. No offense, but just <laughs> I... <laughs> I definitely don't think does they this change, are. Uh, does this change your opinion, Calder? What if I told you that a certain Brian Dormemeyer, uh, Dormemouse, was also a ranch hand? Is he really? Well, he does own ranch land. His, his family does own ranch land that he does work on occasionally. So <sighs> Then I am very much biased then. I am one now 1,000% biased to say that they would win. Sorry. Sorry, uh, see, see, certain I, people that own a venue. I knew that would, uh, I knew that would turn you. Yeah, that really, that really did it. That really did it. I don't like the whole hipster vibe, and the beer of the week is super cringy for someone that doesn't like alcohol. So, like, I don't, I totally don't care for the whole hipster camping Simeon Bruce vibe their podcast has. Whoa, whoa. But uh, <laughs> this, yeah, the Eagles have a very Simeon Bruce vibe to them. If you could sum it up with with one word, it would be I very think so. Simeon Brucey. Um, is that not accurate? Do you think that is not accurate? Uh, I just think they would not think that that's very accurate, and uh, I will appreciate their opinion on that. That uh, if if Brian does listen, because I think he's the only one that would. Um, oh, thank you, Brian. I will say I'm I'm gonna look at this as like the Dudley Boys versus the NWO because I think a a certain venue might have uh, people piling out of the woodwork to like help them cheat to win, like the NWO used to. But uh, you know, you know what those Dudley boys—they they could uh, pack a punch. They could put a people through a table, multiple peoples through multiple tables. I think they—I don't know. Do they still have like the the highest record of most tag team championships. It's got to be close. Yeah, I, I think it's got. Yeah, no. They were just, they did so much. They worked so much, you know? They probably do, honestly. They probably do. Um, Chains versus off. If the Rowdyverse were to take on managers, um, who would be, what would be some other creators that you would want to collab with? Uh, so this is obviously in reference to our Extreme Rules personas, the uh, Rowdy Ranch Hand and the Billion Clicks Bruce for the Rowdyverse here. Um, which is our WWE just wrestling style way of playing hero clicks. If we had managers, what would be other content creators that we would want to collab with to like be our manager? That's really, that's really interesting. Um, you know, I don't know if there's anyone that necessarily fits my theme super well, as far as like being a manager goes. Um, Hey, there, if we're counting, I think there could be, uh, there could be so for the, for the every the man day. the every man uh the rowdy ranch hand every man i think uh, a certain ed shelton would be a great voice of the people kind of backer for that could be cool i um, you know me and ed get along i think that'd be really cool i actually would older, dig that. but uh much more experienced kind of like managerial sure able to like yeah. show you okay. the ropes um 
for me, for for the billion clicks, Bruce. I don't think he needs it. I think he he's the he's the manager of himself. He would be, yeah. Like, I feel like what, he would recruit somebody who, else to manage. Right? Who I would I think he has minions. He's not like you know. Um, if we were to go into like the past of like his upbringing, I could think of like you know some people that might have helped him along the way become who he is, the evilness that he is. Um, but as far as like where he stands now, I don't think it would make sense for him to have somebody that he takes advice from. Cause if, if he is anything, if billion clicks, Bruce is anything, it is definitely a man that does not take advice from other people. Yeah, sure. I, I definitely see that for your guy. I, I see it a lot. Uh, the last one we have on Discord, and then we can wrap the show up here, is James says, are you guys into film musical scores? If so, which comic book movie has the best? I know a more recent one, but Spider-Man has it for me. So it's just Spider-Verse has it for him. The only reason I don't like Spider-Verse's score is because I, I absolutely hate the song Sunflower. The next time I hear that song, I'm shooting whatever speaker is playing it. They used to play it in the gym all the time, and I, I hate Sunflower. I cannot stand it. Uh, no, it sucks, dude. It sucks so bad. There might have been other good music in that movie. I honestly have no idea. Um, but Spider-Verse is a great movie. Sunflower just really, really sucks. Um, what's a movie musical score that I like? Uh, Watchmen. Not like the score where it's like just the weird music with no lyrics because I don't really like listening to music without lyrics. That's not I don't I can't derive any joy from that unless it's like Endgame, you know, where it's right. portals and you're like, yeah, man. Or like Star Wars, like obviously, and then like Star Wars, like it feels iconic. But for comic book stuff, I think the Watchmen has cool songs that they use to represent different scenes, except for Hallelujah. They use Hallelujah in the worst possible way, and it sucks. <laughs> but besides that. Besides uh, all of you, there and was the, a secret then, gold. No, nah, dude, they butchered so many. I... used. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, but like uh, the opening, the times they are changing. Yeah. That's perfect. I think that's perfect. So um, as like the first a time I, fan uh, of uh, Across yeah. the Universe, which is like a, a film that adapts Beatles music into like a storyline. Um, yeah, I really like the the Watchmen music because it's like kind of kind of period typical kind of music, like stuff that kind of fits like the the mood and environment, but not necessarily like the right timeline stuff, which doesn't really matter to me. But yeah, it's cool. Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, hopefully that sort of answers your uh, question, James. We um, that's gonna be it for the show, guys. Really quick, I'm gonna read a. Jedi Legend Hero Clicks Tip of the Week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. Jedi Legend says, uh, you might keep playing it the old way, Colossal Stamina, but Masters of Evil has changed again in 2021. When adjacent uh, friendly character makes an attack negative one to opposing defense, it's like the police team ability, but you're close. So yeah, we saw this. If you ever played the old Hydra Wolverine, he did this with the Hydra team ability, made it for close instead of ranged. And now that's just sort of how Masters of Evil works, which is pretty cool. So yeah, guys, uh, definitely keep that up. Uh, if you want to support Dialies for Hero Clicks, you can do so on Patreon.com. Become a member, be entered. You can ask us questions like how they do. And you can also just send us an email or send us uh, a message on Facebook or Twitter if you have questions. Uh, email is dial h for hero at gmail.com but of course the patreon gets you access to things like tokens and stickers and all sorts of fun stuff i made a bunch of rise and fall tokens uh we're slowly working on getting pogs ready uh for the wonder woman set and we might have some pogs maybe for uh for rise and fall i think it's just kotick is that right simeon so there probably won't there might be a pog there might be a pog that's the that's the bear the, cub yeah, the little Tiger cub. red guy yeah um i yeah, but I yeah think guys. everything else has a bice like an actual figure so yeah yeah i think that's so that's um yeah can think of that's a that's all sorts of cool stuff you can get on a patreon we also do uh giveaways every month if we would have gotten to 200 dollars last month we were going to give away uh fulcum of ominous it'd be like that sometimes we weren't able to do it but of course uh and then all of that Patreon stuff just goes right back into the podcast. It pays for the podcast. It pays for Patreon rewards. It pays for Simeon and I to make videos and all that fun stuff on YouTube. So 
we want to make sure it all goes back into the show because that's what it's all about. So that's all I've got to say. Thank you guys for listening. And I really hope you enjoyed the show. I never said that. It sounds dumb when I'm like, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the show. I'm like, why, why would I say that? It's stupid. Now let's get on with the show. Uh, yeah. So speaking of hating things that you enjoy, you know what you need in your life? More hero clicks. <laughs> what a great segue. Uh, and yeah. you know who can help out with that? Coolstuffinc.com. They happen to be our sponsor, but you know what? They're also a pretty decent company to work with. Speaking of cool stuff that you can buy and uh, subscribe to for life, you should check out Coolstuffinc.com, where they've got the coolest Heroclix singles and sealed products uh, soon to be releasing this X-Men Rise and Fall set, if it ever comes out, whiz kids. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, code DIAL5 will get you 5% off. And then once you beat that 5%, you can you can go your own way, my friend. You don't need us anymore. You're too powerful for this podcast. Check them out, coolstuffinc.com. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny? It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? Hey, Google, back some. Let the cast in here because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow.